So we're starting 7.9 exponential and logarithmic equations. Yay. Um, so we're going to begin with making sure our goal is for you can, um, you can use logarithms to solve exponential equations and you can use exponents to solve log logarithmic equations. That's because they are inverse operations of each other. And with that understanding, we can solve problems. So for our first set of problems, we're gonna solve exponential equations with the same base. So exponential equations with the same basis. All right, <clears throat> so there are three steps that we follow. One, we write the base in prime factor form so that, so that each side of the equal sign have the same base. Okay, so our goal is to have only one base on each side. Then step two, we set the exponents equal to each other and use inverse operations to solve for X. And then step three, check your solution in the original equation. Okay, sounds easy enough? All right, so our first one here. Um, we have 1 16th equals 64 4X minus three. So with 1 16th, we want each side to have the same base, okay? Um, for 16 and 64, their prime number, their prime factorization would be two. So the reason why we say that is because 16 becomes four times four, which breaks down to two times two, two times two, agree? So 1 16th is saying two to the negative four. Why is it negative? It's a fraction, it's in the denominator. So my my prime factorization is two to the negative four. How many twos did it prime it break down to? One, two, three, four, right? Agree? All right, then so that side is done. So step one is to do it to both sides. Now I'm gonna break down 64 to its prime factorization. So 64 is eight times eight, which breaks down to be two, four, two, four, which breaks down to be two, 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 two. Agree? So prime factorization for 64 is one, two, three, four, five, six, two to the six. Are you still with me? So this equals two to the six, but there's already a power there. So two to the six times the existing power. What are your questions about step one? Are we good? So after step one, we then are gonna set, um, because our bases are the same, we now just have to set our powers equal to each other. And our powers are negative four and two and six times four X minus three. So we have negative four equals six times four X minus three. Now, isn't this just a regular algebra one problem? So what do I do? Well, I need to get X by itself. So I'm gonna start using, I'm gonna get rid of the parentheses and use inverse operations. So I can distribute, gives me negative four equals 24 X minus 18. I'm gonna add 18 to both sides. That gives me negative, it gives me positive 14 equals 24 X. And then I'm gonna divide by 24. And that gives me X equals seven, 12. Do we see how that happened? Okay. So step three is to check your answer. So step three, if I take seven twelfths and plug it back into the original, so we have one sixteen equals 64 to the four times seven twelfths minus three. Remember I said it'll be handy to have a scientific calculator on your checking. Um, we can try to do it without. So we have four times seven divided by 28. Let me open my handy dandy calculator. Mm 
going to go to desmos.com forward slash scientific. Open a scientific calculator so that we all can see it. And we're going to test to see if I did it correctly, if we did it correctly. So we have 64 to the 4 times 7 twelfths. Um, minus three, correct? No, nope, it's still a power. Let's say a power. Uh oh. Let's try that again. I gotta put all sixty-four parentheses. Parentheses. There we go. Four times seven twelve. Minus three. There we go. Hit enter. And I get that. And I need to see it as a fraction. Is that the fraction I need it? Yay, we did it. Good job, guys. So we checked. It worked out. So we end up with 1 16th equals 1 16th. So that means our answer is x equals 7 12. All right, so let's try number two. So number two, we need to get them in prime factor, prime factorization. So four breaks down to what? Two, two. So four becomes two squared, and there's already a four X there. What does eight factor down to? Remember eight is two, four, it's two, 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 right? So eight becomes two to the third. So step one, prime factorization. Step two is to take the powers, your exponents and set them equal to each other. So we have two times four X equals three. And this is just a regular algebra problem, right? So two times four X is eight X equals three. To get X by itself, we divide by eight. And we're left with X equals three eighths. Step three is to check myself. So if I take three eighths and plug it into the original four to the four times three eighths, does it equal eight? That's my goal. I'm gonna go back to my calculator and I'm gonna type in four, we have six parentheses, and we said we're typing in four times three divided by eight. Hit enter, and does it equal eight? Well, yes it does. Because it's an equation, you can check yourself. You don't have to submit it as your final answer until you've checked yourself. All right, check, all worked out. How do we feel so far? Okay. Do you see how it's all separate skills you've already learned? Okay, the next one we're gonna do, I know it says three on your paper, don't know why it changes it to one on mine. Um, so we have 125, 9x minus 2 equals 25, okay? Again, we want to put them into prime factorization. So the prime number that these should break down to should be what? What? 5. My prime factorization should have a 5 in it. So if I have 125, it factors down to 5 times 25, which factors down to 5 times 5. So for 125, its prime factorization is? Five cubed. And then it already had 9x minus 2 there. And then obviously 25, its prime factorization is 5 squared. So step one, done. Step two, we're going to take the exponents and set them equal to each other. So you have 3 times 9x minus 2 equals 2. 
I'm going to go ahead and distribute. Gives me 27x minus 6 equals 2. Add 2 to both sides. I mean, eight, add 6 to both sides. And we get 27x equals 8. And we divide by 27. And we have x equals 8 27. And your third step is to check. So if I take this and I plug it into the original, 125, 9 times 8 divided by 27 minus 2, does it equal 25? So I'm going to go back to my calculator. And we're typing in 125 to the nine times eight divided by 27 plus or minus, minus two, right? Minus two, because I want it all to be a power. Make sure you're using the um, parentheses. And what did we get? 25, oh my gosh, we're geniuses, we did it. All right. Yay, we checked it and it came out perfect. So we know our answer is 827. All right, so uh, I don't know if you heard when I said in the beginning, you may need some scratch paper. I'm gonna give you these four to do independently. Okay, they're not on your notes, it's added practice. So on scratch paper, these are the four for you to try. All right, so these are the answers you should have gotten. Um, on the first one, that your it was already prime factored, bases were all the same. So we had 2a equals negative a, combined like term. Gives me 3a equals zero. So obviously a has to be zero. Here, uh, number two, your prime factorization for 243 should have been what? Three to the fifth power. Do we all come down to that? Hopefully. So it should have been three to the fifth power. So this became three, one minus two X equals three to the fifth power. Bases are the same. Now you just focus on the powers. So you have one minus two X equals five. Subtract one from both sides, gives you negative two X equals four. Divide by negative two. And you should have gotten X equals Negative two. On three, um, bases are already the same. Focusing on the power. So we have three minus two X equals negative X. Move my smallest X first to combine like term. Gives me three equals X. Okay, on number four, I had to combine these bases. So when I'm combining um, multiplying two numbers with the same base, that means I add their powers. So this one became four, negative two X plus X equals 64. And negative two X plus X is, is just what? Just negative X, right? Equals 64. And then prime factorization of these we've already done. So you should have had two to the negative two equals and 64 was what? Two to the, sorry, I didn't, should have been two to the six. So now you have negative two X and you have positive six. So negative two X equals six. What does X have to be to make this true? Negative three. Okay. Questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, 